The graphs we've seen so far allow us to identify and visualize features of individual time series. Sometimes we're though interested in identifying relationships between multiple time series. The plots that we're going to use to help us visualize this will be scatter plots. Let's have a look at an example. So we're going to go back to the Vic electricity, Victorian electricity demand table, and we're only going to extract year 2014. Remember, this is half hourly data. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of a trick here. Remember that in these Sybil, we get demand, temperature, but we also get the holiday, uh, whether there's a holiday or not on that day. Uh, what we're going to do here is separate between weekdays and weekends. So basically, day two to day six in weekday date will become a weekday. So this is Monday to Friday. And then um, Saturday and Sunday, day one, which is Sunday, and day seven will be um, weekends. I'll show you why this will be interesting uh, further down. So let's have a look at the time plots of these two time series that we're interested in, in, uh, in uh, um, exploring the relationship be between them. So demand on the top panel, uh, temperature in the bottom panel. So again, these uh, time plots allow us to identify individual features of these time series. So in Australia, January, February is the summer. Um, then autumn, then winter, the coldest months in uh, June, July, August. And then again, we start, we enter spring and the temperatures increase as we're going towards summer. Okay. So let's have a look at a scatter plot. We're now on our Y axis, we have electricity demand in gigawatts. And on our X axis, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. And this now allows us to see what the relation between these two variables are. So what we can see here is that clearly this is a nonlinear relationship. Um, there's an increase in electricity demand as the temperature increases. So there's an, uh, an upward trend here or a positive relationship here. Um, there's also an effect of the colder months where um, demand increases um, due to heating. So on this right-hand side, we have the air conditioning going on. On the left-hand side, where the temperatures are low, we have uh, heating. Um, a nice trick to do is to actually separate, as I said, between the day types. So here we have holiday um, holidays whenever they fall, or we have weekdays or weekends. And we can do that by using the color aesthetic in um, ggplot. So we're going to uh, define color as day type. So hence, what we see here is that the green weekends are at the bottom, you know, lower demand um, for week ends compared to weekdays, but the shape of the demand seems to be the same. So as temperatures increase, uh, demand of electricity in weekends increases. Um, as temperatures drop, again, um, demand of electricity increases. And the week, uh, sorry, the holidays um, are clustered together with a weekend, so seem to behave similarly to weekends. Um, one useful uh, measure that we very often look at is the correlation coefficient, which is calculated um, uh, using this formula, and it shows the linear relationship between two variables, uh, y and x. In, uh, in our case, uh, for the example that we looked at before, we can calculate the correlation coefficient between uh, electricity demand and temperatures. Notice, though, that we, that we point out here, it's the linear relationship and not it doesn't capture the nonlinearities that we see in the previous slide. Now, the correlation coefficient uh, lies between negative one and one, where negative shows a strong uh, negative relationship. Uh, one shows a positive or a perfect uh, positive relationship. Uh, as we get closer to zero, uh, the relation between the two variables becomes uh, lower. Let's have a look at another example. Now we're going to look at uh, exploring relationships between more than two variables. So we have... Um, 
This is US data. We have US consumption, expenditure, income, production, savings, and unemployment. And we want to see the relationships between these. We may be interested in modeling uh, some of these relationships. Now, a useful function to do that is to use the GGPs in the GGOY um, package. So here we're going to grab from our um, US change civil columns two to six, which is uh, consumption, income, production, savings, and unemployment. Um, and we're going to use the GGPs function. So what does the GGPs function produce? Well, it produces this matrix of plots. Um, the default setting is that at the bottom half of this matrix, it will produce scatter plots between the two variables that we see along our y-axis and our x-axis. And on the upper half, we'll provide the correlation coefficient. Um, in the diagonal, we have densities of the variables. So you can see various features, for example, at the positively skewed unemployment. So let's see some interesting features for this data set. So um, let's start first with the strong positive correlations. So um, this cell here shows me the correlation between production and consumption, and that's reflected. Um, and this scatter plot um, shows us the linear relation between uh, consumption and production again. So um, yeah, so so um, the correlation coefficient reflects what we see in this scatter plot here. Um, a strong correlation between savings and income, okay, reflected by this scatter plot. So a strong positive relationship between these two variables, and then we have a couple of negative strong correlations. So consumption and unemployment. As unemployment increases, consumption decreases. So there's a strong negative relationship. Um, with a correlation coefficient of minus 0.527. Also, a negative correlation between um, production and unemployment. As unemployment uh, increases or as production decreases, we're not talking about causation here. We're just looking at the relation between these two. Um, there's, uh, there's a negative relation between the two variables. As production increases, unemployment uh, decreases and vice versa. Um, 